Grace and peace, everybody. I just want to thank you for joining us once again on this week's episode of Bridging the Gap. Today, I have my special guest, a good friend. I was sitting here thinking about this, and we'll talk about this in just a moment, but my good friend, evangelist minister, Kathy Patton. Thank you for coming on the show, Kathy. Well, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. I was thinking, how long have we known each other now? I've been at Destiny now for 10 and a half years. Were you coming when I first came? I came probably about a year after okay. because I was there before, but I... I knew you were, yeah, yeah, but I was starting to think, when did we become... I'd get to know you, so I figured it's been a while. So, but anyway, I wanted to introduce you to a special, special lady, a powerful, anointed woman of God. I've used her in illustrations before. I've used her in my messages before. We've been working together in deliverance at Destiny Christian Center for the past few years now, and uh, and what a dynamic ministry that is. But today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Miss Kathy Patton. And so, uh, Kathy, I just want to ask you a question today, and we're going to let people give them some insight to your testimony. And uh, uh, you have an amazing testimony for those who've never heard it. Uh, and I just wanted you to uh, let them hear a little bit about what's going on. I don't want to try to bring up the past, but we're overcomers by the word of our testimonies. And I know that's, you're an overcomer from a lot of the things that you've been through. But if only a few people could have went through what half of what you went through, I don't know that they would even be standing today. So if you will, just give our viewers a little insight to your story and just tell them a little bit about where it all began in your journey. Well, it all began uh, when I was about seven years old. My dad and mom got a divorce. Mm -hmm. And after divorce, uh, my mom remarried. And when she did, uh, she married my stepdad, which was abusive Mm -hmm. uh, physically. Okay. And so um, by the time I was 13 years old, I was drinking because my mom uh, wanted me to make her drinks. And so... When I didn't make them like she wanted me to, she would hit me or do something um, like slap me or something like that. So I started sipping on her Mm, drink to try to make it the way she wanted me to, uh, well, that she wanted. Mm -hmm. And so when she did that, I realized one time after sipping on it that she didn't hit me. Mm. And from that point on, I started sipping on her drink bringing it to her. So I became an alcoholic by the time I was, uh, I was 13 and a half. I was, I was drinking every single day. And so at 19, I was an alcoholic. I'd been through rapes. I had been raped by a police officer. I had been raped, um, by several people at that point. Now, how old were you when you first, when you first experienced something like that? When I first got raped, I was 16. 16. Uh, and um, then at 17, I was raped by the police officer. Wow. And so um, I got pregnant behind that ra- rape. I kept oh. a child, and um, I was just in a lot of uh, turmoil because I was like, why is this happening to me? What's mm. going on? Stuff like that. But um, steady drinking, then I found out that I was pregnant, and so I stopped drinking while I was pregnant, mm-hmm. but as soon as I... You Ended right the pregnancy, I went right back to drinking, wow. trying to medicate, trying to deal with the hurt and frustration yeah. and stuff like that. But the day I came home from the hospital, my stepdad put me out of the house with mm. a child. Oh, my goodness. So my grandmother took me in for about two months. And then uh, after that, I got my own place, been on my own ever since. And you were how old? I was uh, 18. Okay. When uh, I was actually, I had a child three days before my 18th birthday. Okay. Okay. So that was um, that's what happened there. Got put out. My grandmother took me in Mm -hmm. after two months being with my grandmother. I got my own place uh, and I got on welfare and all that stuff. Right. Um, Began to, like I said, pick back up the drinking again. Right. And by the time my child was a year old, I was back shaking and needed a drink wow. when I got up in the morning, needed to drink to go to bed. Right. And so, uh, yeah, things was really difficult then. And um, so one day I decided that I wanted to stop drinking because I didn't want to die that way because right. I was just, I was just going there. 
So I went through withdrawal, went through shakes by myself. I told my mom to come and get my daughter, and she did. And so she kept her. I told her, don't call me because I ain't going to open the door. I ain't going to answer the telephone because I was the flop house, so to speak. I was mm-hmm. a place where people would come and crash, and we would drink all night. And um, I prepared food, so I, I cooked. They brought mm-hmm. the liquor, you know. So anyway, that's some of the things that I went through about in, in that point in time. But overall, my life was miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, even after that, even after I stopped drinking, I got raped. Like all total, I got raped like eight times. Eight. I was gang raped. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my boyfriends, where I was supposed to be safe at, had all his buddies. Um, I was their prize, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. But I was, I was their thing for the night, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they was passing me around and stuff like that. But my cousin had got killed, so I was drunk that night. And oh, so it was just crazy with that. And then I got to a place where I was suicidal. I didn't care about living. Mm-hmm. I put myself in dangerous situations. Um, plus, I tried to kill myself. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was just getting ready to ask you that question. Did you ever feel like giving up or even contemplating suicide during those times? It sounds like yeah. you have. Yeah, man. It was just, uh, it was really hard because I didn't really have anybody that that I could talk to. Yeah. Uh, I was going through all this by myself. I actually isolated myself. Um, I didn't want nobody around me. If I went into a club, I hung by myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there for a minute, and then I would go wherever I was going to lay down at. I became homeless for a while. I lived mm-hmm. in an abandoned house okay. and uh, almost froze to death. I realized that there was some bags of clothes, so I piled right. clothes on top of me during the winter and uh, stayed in an abandoned house. So been through a lot but you know what god became my sounding brass um i knew about deliverance but i didn't know how to apply it mm-hmm. so about the time i began to know about that it was like years later wow so um my testimony well my life my life depended on me being delivered wow now now you mentioned that your mother and where was your mother at? You said your stepfather basically kicked you out. Now, did your mother never stand up for you or, or say, hey, I'm going to bring her back into my home later down the road? What, what, how's your relationship with your mother today? I don't think me and you have ever talked about this. Well, my mom at the time, she was on his side. She would let him beat me for hours. Like mm. uh, one day I was cleaning the house and knocked over some a fishing pole. One broke, one done wrong with it. Picked it back up, put it in a corner. Just the broom had hit it. He beat me for an hour and a half. Blood was popping on my veins. I got a scar that shows where he abused me at that time. Mm -hmm. And she was sitting on the sideline. And I said, Mom, help me. She said, well, you deserve it. Oh, man. You know, so it was like, okay. And he said he was going to beat me until I started crying. But I was so numb. I was in shock that it was hard for me to even shed tears. My goodness. So, My goodness. yeah, it was hard. And then uh, when I got put out, she was right there. And she said, he said, you got to go, you got to go. And did, she never stood up for me. Wow. Yeah, I was now, now, where was your father at in this whole, your whole life? My, my dad had remarried, and his wife really didn't want to have nothing to do with uh, us. Mm. But how many was there? If you, I mean, how many kids did he have? Dad had five by mom. Okay, okay. And then... Uh, we, my stepdad had five. Okay. So I'm the oldest of ten. Gotcha. So them are some of the things that I went through was was really hard and difficult. And like I said, I became suicidal, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't care. I really mm-hmm. didn't. But nobody could tell that from looking at me because I always had to smile. Yeah. And um, they would look at me and say, "Well, you know, you the life of the party or mm-hmm. whatever." And I was dying on the inside. So uh, it became a struggle for me. Now, you'd mentioned that you're, you lived with your grandmother. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, what was your, gran- what was your grandmother? Was she a churchgoer? Did she, 
did she ever introduce you to Jesus? Tell us a little bit about how did you even get to know about Jesus Christ? My grandmother, she was she was one of the neighborhood prayer houses. Okay. And so everybody came to her house to have prayer. Yeah. All her little friends would come in there and, and they would pray and they would be around the pot belly stove and mm. they'd be speaking in tongues and wow. doing all that stuff. And we was little, so we we thought that that was fun. So we Im- imitated them. Right, right, right. You know, we was doing the preaching thing and the <laughs> screaming and yeah. <laughs> so so uh yeah, she taught us um uh, she taught us about God, but I really didn't have an encounter with him until that day that I decided I wanted to stop drinking. So tell us a little bit about that day. You said you were 19 when you decided to make that decision. Yeah, I was 19 when I was when I decided to stop drinking. Mm-hmm. And um, I went through seven days of torment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was torture. Um, um, I gave my daughter to my mom and told her to come and get her. And I locked myself in that house by myself for seven days. I went through withdrawal, shakes, mm. um, mental anguish, physically. My stomach felt like it was going to go inside out. And um, I was shaking. And the pain got so bad on my sixth day that I was screaming at the top of my lung. I never forget this older lady that I've been knowing for years. And uh, actually one of the members at our church, was, that was his grandmother. Okay. And so she prayed while I was upstairs screaming. Mm. And she told me, she said, I don't know what you was going through up there, but I was praying for you. And I was going through withdrawal. So a lot of people died from withdrawal sure. that drastic, and yeah. um, or they gotta medicate them now. They have medication that they ease them into withdrawals mm-hmm. and stuff like that. They help calm them down. But I didn't have nothing, so I didn't know God or Jesus personally. Okay. So when I my prayer was, if you are God. And if there's a God somewhere, I've heard about you all my life, but I don't know who you are. You know, I really didn't. I felt, you know, different things, but I didn't know that was really God. Yeah. And so um, he came in my room and I kid you not, it was like the sun came in my bedroom and it was like somebody poured a bottle of oil on top of my head, yeah. and it just went all the way down to my feet, and every pain in my body stopped my right God. there. My I mean, God. it was like, oh, man, you know, nothing. It was nothing, and yeah. I knew what I was going through those seven days. This yeah. was my seventh day now, and it spoke. the voice spoke to me and said, which I know now is God, said, get up and go to church. And I said, I don't even know what day it is. He said, it's Sunday. Mm. And I got up, and and the only dress I had was what I borrowed from my sister one time. Right. And I wore it to uh, Mount Olive Church of God in Christ. And if All you right. went in there without a dress on, you were going to go to out. hell anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it was right. like, so yeah, so that was part of my, that was my journey. Mm. And that's when I began to know who who God really was. So when people was telling me, well, you know, that Jesus stuff, that God stuff, ain't no count. Yeah, okay. Mm. For As a personal rela- relationship yeah. I got. Well, you were talking about, sounds like the breakthrough that you went through, that God began to heal you and mend you from the inside through your alcoholism. Uh, and the major breakthrough that you saw basically or felt that such a such a presence hit upon you. So when did you ever experience your first time of deliverance? Like, did anybody ever take you through something or walk you through something? Talk to me. No, my first time of getting deliverance, I was married. Um, I think I was about 23. Mm-hmm. And uh, really getting deliverance, I listened to Bob Larson. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Bob Larson, man. He, he, uh, that helped me. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, Maybe, uh, no, I'll take that back. The first time I got deliverance was when I was at Jimmy Clark's church, uh, Bishop okay, Clark. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had a man come down called Melvin Smith. Okay. And Melvin Smith would teach us deliverance. And I heard demons screaming out of people and stuff wow. like that. But 
I never really got deliverance from there. So one day I was praying and I was going through some turmoil because I really needed some inner healing, didn't know Mm -hmm. the difference. Right. And so God began to share with me that it was a strong man and it was a bloodline because we had alcoholics on our bloodline mm-hmm. and um, even the spirit of molestation and rape. My goodness. And so it was the spirit that was following me. So you, let, let's just for our viewers, maybe that listening and watching right now, you mentioned bloodline. Um, kind of explain that first off because somebody was like, what is she talking about right now? She's talking about there's a movie called Bloodline. It, Explain that to, to the maybe the novice that's listening right now about what that really means. And once you begin to identify what that meant, talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Well, when I was um, talking about the bloodline, that means that it is like a generation okay. yeah. and generation and generation. Just passed down. And yeah. yeah, it just comes down the bloodline. That's mm-hmm. what we call the bloodline. It's a generational curse mm-hmm. that repeats itself and finds a vessel that it can actually use or it can actually oppress yeah. or even enter in. Mm-hmm. And so some things come through the womb, too. So mm-hmm. it's a bloodline curse. So when I hear people say that they was born a certain way, yeah. mainly I was uh, alcoholic. And then we had the rapes and the molestation. And we had all kind of perversion mm-hmm. on our bloodline. Wow. So that's what that means. Gotcha. And so when you finally, when, when, when who brought that to surface to you? I guess... Some of this, and when did you come to a realization that this thing is deep rooted, that I didn't even, it was just a sign to me, so to speak? When did you realize this? And well, I realized that when I went to Crusaders, it actually saved my life at Crusaders. Um, I went to Apostle John Eckhart's yes. church, uh, became a deliverance captain. But the first time I got deliverance, I was on the floor, mm-hmm. up under a table crying, and he was calling out the spirit of rape and molestation. Mm. And I didn't know how deep that was rooted in my life until he said it, and I was on the floor screaming and hollering. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm on the floor. I'm thinking this (laughs) in my head. I'm on the floor, and I'm screaming and hollering, and I'm thinking, okay, what in the world is really going on here? Mm. And the Lord said, all the stuff that I've been taught, I didn't understand yeah. to that degree. I so then I, that's when deliverance became re- a reality. Okay, gotcha. Now, now saying all that, God, now God is using you in a mighty way uh, through deliverance. When did you start feeling like you had a calling personally into this area? And how did God speak to you personally uh, around this area of ministry? Well, when I was 19, when I was 19, the Lord showed me demons, showed me spirits, showed me angels. He divided them, sh- showed me what they was operating, how they was mm-hmm. operating. I could see spirits enter people at church. Mm-hmm. It was like, uh, okay, he, there was like a little cloud over this one lady. I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you about this in- incident. It was mind-blowing to me because I was younger, and I seen it. It was like a little cloud over this lady's head. And it was going around to this other lady. Mm -hmm. And so by the time it got to that lady, she began to scream and holler. And the Lord said the self-pity that she had opened a portal. And that thing said, shoop, right down inside of her. And I was like, okay, there's something to that. And so he began to break it down at that point. Mm -hmm. He began to tell me how spirits entered through... Like if somebody had a severe heartache or they mm. traumatized or something like that, he began to start talking to me about it. So by the time I was 20, I think 22, I was actually practicing deliverance and doing deliverance. Mm. But then um, when I went to Apostle John Aircock, I was trained in every area and became a deliverance captain. Gotcha. And also became so skillful, they had me teaching deliverance okay. and spiritual warfare. Right. That's interesting. And yeah, I mean, I, I witnessed it firsthand. And uh, you definitely, God has anointed you in this area uh, to call out those things that some people just don't even know that they're there. And so that I love how you, I'm, I'm glad you explained bloodline because a lot of people think, oh, it's not that deep. 
oh, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, my father was an alcoholic, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be an alcoholic. And and so they just push it off to the side. So I'm glad you brought that because there may be a viewer right now or even a listener that has struggled more than the, I would say. Not everybody, I like how Bishop O'Neill says it, not everybody can take a sip of beer or a sip of alcohol because of the bloodline and how it's addressed. So I appreciate you taking the time and explaining that out. So I always ask this question, uh, and it's it's a question I love because I'm a man of vision. I like to see what future things are going to hold. I like to see people, what, what God is speaking to them about what he's projecting for their future. So with that being said, where do you see yourself in this ministry of deliverance going in the next five years? Well, I see myself actually counseling people as a deliverance counselor okay. um, because everything is not a demon, but there are things that enter in through hurts and yeah. rejection. So you have to deal with inner hurts and you have to deal with inner inner spirits that are, mm-hmm. that are there that just are wounds, mm-hmm. they're wounds. And then I want to help people identify some things. You just got, you got to crucify your That's flesh. Crucify you got to yeah. do something with this flesh, man. And so you stop blaming the devil because mm-hmm. it ain't the devil. It's just you. It's you. And you got to deal with that. And then some things you do have to deal with when there's sure. a repeated cycle. Mm-hmm. When it's ongoing or you got a compulsive way of thinking about this and it's always in your face and it seemed like I can never get beyond this, an automatic failure and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, you can always identify. But it's usually a cycle or something that's repetitive. And so that's where um, So so I want to see myself as a counselor. That's awesome. And I can see it happening. Uh, I see it happening. So, hey, I appreciate you taking the time on this this day, on this this podcast. If you want to follow my sister, Kathy, you can follow her on Facebook. Yes. Uh, I believe, do you, do you have any other social media out, uh, outlets that they can follow you on? Not right now. Just, um, I do Facebook Lives yep. a lot. And so, under Lanita Patton. Lanita, L-A-N. I-T-T-A. I-T-T-A, Patton. So, you can follow her. She does inspirational messages. She'll sometimes address specific things. I've been on, I've listened to a session where you've talked about specific things that God has put on your spirit. So she's definitely worth a follow. So go ahead and find her on Facebook and you'll definitely be blessed. And again, I appreciate you taking the time on this day and blessing somebody who's watching, even on your testimony. The Bible says that we are overcomers by the word of our testimony. And when there may be somebody listening to your testimony saying, man, I've experienced some similar things that you have been through. Today, you may have set somebody free or give them hope about their tomorrow. So I appreciate you taking the time and explaining some of your hurtful past. And so I appreciate you for watching again on Bridging the Gap. And again, join us next week. I will have my good friend again, Kathy Patton. And we're going to talk about deliverance next week on a deeper level. Good day. God bless. We'll see you next week.